From many different lands, we gather on this land, in this place, at this time. You are with us. God of earth, the land, the sky, in difficult times on rocky ground, when the landscape seems to have changed. We, we gather to worship. worship. Find us, O oh God, shaped by the dust, grounded in hope and eager to grow. You are with us. Listen, land is inviting us in. She asks us to join in her song deep within the earth. Land cries out from the ground. There is grief in her song, but there is a rhythm of hope. Listen, we are not separate. Our hearts beat together as one. Where could we grow from spirit? Nowhere, nowhere. God is under our feet. God is over our heads. God is here. Listen. And let us sing. We are dust. We, we shall, shall return, return to, to dust. The land is filled with treasure. We, we have, have taken, taken treasure from, from the land and have left it broken. The land is rich to nourish and sustain. We strip it of goodness, turning fertile plains into wastelands. The land is plentiful and full of variety. We fight, we fight for control. From a, a desire, desire for more, it becomes killing fields instead of sanctuary. The, the land, land cries out in agony, and the people cry out in misery. The land longs for mercy, and the people yearn for comfort and care. God, are, are you there? there? Do, Do you, you care? care? God's heart, God hears lands cry, and God hears the voices rise. Let, Let us, us cry out for an end to the violence, done, done to the earth, and done to one another. There is no thing, and no one, and no place outside or beyond the reach of God's care. Let, Let this be our song, and our shared labor. labor. 
God's gift of forgiveness opens the way for transformation and life. Thanks be to God for the love that listens and grows. From this promise, from this promise kept, we can know a sense of peace, that God hears our cries and everything else's, that God is reconciling all creation. That means in whatever ways we have wounded or been wounded, there can be renewal, Holy One. Help us listen to the voices of creation. Voices of other people sharing their truths. And also the voices of the land, the creatures, the very creation. Help us listen for your voice in the midst of your word. Speak God, your people are listening. Amen. So we begin with Psalm 139, verses 7 to 12. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as day, for the darkness is as light to you. And a second reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, the fifth chapter. beginning with verse 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses even over those whose sins were not like the transgressions of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift of grace from the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning, friends. <clears throat> when we started gathering in the room, I was noticing some of the images in your backgrounds and uh, noticing the rain and the trees, the forests, uh, there was an early photo in the slideshow that Chris Young took. There was a, another photo, the, the one with corn planted that I took years ago. We are surrounded by land that is life-giving. So on this Sunday in the season of creation, we have some time to meditate on the gift that land is and what our relationship with it is. Those of us that um, 
are attuned to some of the environmental movement for conservation efforts, for sustainability, for um, renewable energy, um, for living lightly on the land. Those who um, like outdoor, outdoor activities like hiking or camping or fishing or paddling or biking or gardening. There's so many ways that we feel our connection with creation. And those of us that don't do those activities, many of us still bring in plants from outside, something that we tend, the philodendron that's been handed down across generations, uh, the flower bulbs that were given to us by someone precious. There are so many ways that we have connections whether or not we pay attention seems to be a question. We only live because of what the earth produces. Our life literally depends on the ground beneath our feet. And yet, we don't always treat it that way. I don't know that I've heard it recently, but for many, many centuries, for a long, long time, people have often referred to holy ground, like in last week's reading, when Moses turns aside to see what this burning bush is about, and the voice of God comes and says, take off your sandals. You're standing on holy ground. And people have made a leap from certain spaces being holy ground to the assumption that everything else must be unholy. Now, it's entirely possible that some of that had to do with the way the church operated in the world rather than the way God moved in the world. That if the church, the institutional church, owned the land, it was therefore holy. And if the church didn't own it, it was not holy. It wasn't so long ago. That the manner of one's death might determine whether you could be buried in certain plots of land. We have some odd behaviors when it comes to distinguishing holy ground from unholy ground. And I don't think it fits with some of the rest of scripture. Yes, in the story of Moses in Genesis, we hear Sorry, and in Exodus, we hear the story of God describing certain place as holy ground, but the description doesn't say there isn't, that there is unholy ground. And so this psalm today, the 139th psalm, which is one of my favorites, I love how reassuring it is of God's presence, not just in our lives, but in all creation. The psalmist writes these lyrics. If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I go to Sheol, the place of the dead, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and fly to the furthest shore, even there, you will hold me fast. There is nowhere that God is not present. There is no inch of ground that isn't created by God, that, li that life hasn't taken breath. Everywhere we go, every place our feet step, every place we draw breath, God is already present and has always been present. I don't know where the quotation comes from, but I remember hearing a phrase that struck me because I was so, it, it just surprised me. I wasn't used to hearing it that way. And the saying is that there's not holy and unholy ground. There's only sacred and desecrated ground. And of course, 
when there's desecration, it's the result of human behavior. There are things that we do that desecrate ground, the way we render it void of life, the way we turn a productive field that can feed people into a killing field. We can strip mine, we can spill oil or CO2. We can make a mess of things and turn what has been fertile area into a dump, into a wasteland. Now, I want to be honest with you that one of the things I'm aware of is um, I don't think we can live without impact. I don't think we can draw breath or eat or move through our day-to-day -day life without creating trash, without um, taking the life of animal or plant to eat. I don't think we can live without uh, impacting those around us and the very earth that gives us, that sustains our lives. But I absolutely believe we can be more mindful about how we move what resources we use, what our impacts are on the earth itself. I become particularly attuned to this um, while trying to keep uh, my tomato plants alive because this year I have them in pots, which means I have to water them much more often than I do if they're planted in the ground. And um, uh, some of my tomato plants are hardier than others. Some of them tolerate my, my attention or inattention better than others. But there is this interdependence. I give them water and they give me food. And somewhere in there, there is balance. And by my efforts to water and their efforts to grow, I think some bare soil becomes productive. And the seeds return to the ground and new life begins. I think being mindful of our relationships is a starting point for deepening our commitments to care for God's good creation. Uh, and I hope that that fits really well with where you are. I know that it connects for a lot of our church members who are interested in the earth care team. Uh, we are in the process um, of installing solar on our roof. Uh, here at church um, so that we can have less impact on the ground beneath our feet. As this is Land Sunday, I thought I would share a short video with you about the season of creation and why people of faith have felt moved by these stories and this work and the faithfulness that we're encouraged to deepen in our relationship with God and creation. So, a short video. Why do we work together? Some people say it's too late. Some people say that we are drowning. That our homes are on fire. That our ecosystems are lost that injustice will prevail. All of our different rivers, springing forth and mighty, flow into the same sea. We are witnesses of faith. We are witnesses of hope. And we are witnesses of love. Together, we will journey in communion as the people of God to let justice and peace flow.
with joy for all of God's creation and our relationship to it. Let us sing. With joy, we are able to celebrate <clears throat> all that we have in God and share it so that everyone has enough. Thank you for everyone who has built, installed, stocked, cleaned, given, and received through the micro pantry. We will continue doing that through the second pantry and through Grace Lutheran and all of our mission work. We also do it in all the other ways that we serve in this congregation, trying to make connections with the rest of creation for God's sake and for the sake of the world. All the ways we give, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, we trust to God that they may be multiplied and shared. You can give in all the usual ways. We appreciate those. And let us sing. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. <clears throat> what can we offer? What can we bring? You are the ground of everything, the source of all that is, the hope on which we stand, the promise that reaches out an open hand and leads and holds us fast. We bring, bring our, our hopes, our, our dreams, dreams, and, and our, our fears. fears. We bring, we bring our hands, our hearts, and, and our, our tears. And now, God, we pray together this prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Go from this place into the land beloved of God. Tread lightly on the land so that your footprints may not harm. Touch gently with your hands that healing may bring hope. Tremble softly in anticipation of the Spirit's presence. Transform each life with love in every time and place. We, we go, go as, as people beloved, beloved and transforming. Amen. Amen.